it's always hard to say that a little bit of logic is needed before we even start the problem comfortably here. So uh, I first want to kind of look at what I've introduced. I have the wedge only right here from zero to 7.35 times 10 to the negative three millimeters. So here's the logic. Essentially, you got glass up here. And that's all that really matters because you got incoming light going through glass. Well, glass is of higher index of refraction. So you're going to have a inverted wave being reflected off of the glass. But that's not what matters. What matters is the wave that goes through the glass, through this glass, reflected off of here, through the glass and through the glass. And what we're asking is what frequency or what wavelength is constructive and destructive if you were to uh, bounce off of um, some medium. And I believe the medium includes the, uh, the uh, inversion of the wave itself. So, um, so like what I said, what matters is that it comes in, it reflects off of this medium, there's that inversion. And what matters is not being what's reflected back down here, because there will be a little bit of light reflected back downward. But the light that's reflected upward has no inversion. And the light that's reflected back to the air also has no inversion. So the only inversion comes from the reflection off of this glass. So <laughs> essentially that, means we can use this equation, um, seeing that the wavelength of constructive interference is two times the index of refraction of the part that the wave goes through times its distance divided by m, whichever, whichever mode of interference we're talking about, whichever mode uh, um, in general. And then you got lambda d is two times the index of refraction of where the wave exists, times that length that it has to travel through, divided by that mode minus one half. So of course that mode is a multiple, gonna be a multiple of the wavelength. And so that mode minus one half just means that the wavelength is offset one half, which calls for that destructive interference. So uh, we're gonna look at the space between the glass plates as the medium of interference, okay? Um, if you look at that space between the two glasses, you see that D goes from zero to 7.35 times 10 to the negative three millimeters. So we can see that the mode's gonna go from zero to whatever. The question is how many modes are there gonna be for a constructive wavelength to appear through this sort of glass? So that being the case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put lambda as the light wave that's coming in, that's gonna be six, Hundred nanometers. N is going to be the index of refraction of the air that exists between the two glass plates. And we got D being the very highest uh, distance that the wave has to go through in order to be reflected back. And the reason why is because we can see that there are going to be many modes uh, without within it. So anywhere from zero to this D will give us a hint of how many modes of constructive interference there's gonna be from zero to that value anyway. So this D is gonna end up just being 7.35 times 10 to the negative three meter millimeters. And we need to find what M is. We see that M is gonna to equal to two and D over lambda C. And that's gonna be 24.5 modes of brightness or constructive interference. Now for destructive interference, we'll go ahead and again, put all the numbers down. N is gonna be 1.00, D is 7.35 times 10 to negative three millimeters. And our job is to find M. Doing the same math, we see that all we have to do at the end is add another one half. We'll see that the modes, the number of modes for dark fringes is equal to 25. So the answer to part A, how many light and dark bands will there be in this case? 
the answer is there's going to be twenty four light bands and twenty five dark bands. And that's your answer for part A. Part B is conceptual. They ask, will the area next to the wire be bright or dark? Well, we see that M is a whole number for a destructive wavelength at the position of that band or at that wire. So right at D equals the 7.35 times 10 to negative three millimeters, we have a whole number for the mode, which means it will be a dark fringe. Since we have a half number uh, for our mode of a light fringe, it's not going to be light. It's in between. Uh, it's in between one light fringe and another light fringe. So this will be a dark fringe right there. So the answer to part B is very simple. It's just going to be dark. <laughs>